Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Anton, and I will lead today's webinar about Smart PTT installation and troubleshooting process. In case if someone is unfamiliar with our software, I will tell you shortly about its general features. Smart PTT comes in two options. Smart PTT Basic is a solution for small local radio networks where control station is used to dispatch the system. Smart PTT Enterprise allows dispatch and control over complex Motorola Mototurbo networks such as IP Site Connect, Capacity Plus, Link Capacity Plus and Connect Plus. Dispatcher software gives opportunity to control and log the flow of data and voice in radio network, request location of subscribers and monitor the state of repeaters. Smart PTT connects to Mototurbo networks directly via IP including Capacity Plus and Link Capacity Plus over NAI for both voice and data transmission. Capacity Plus networks can also be monitored and logged via IP connection without NAI, but in this case to have ability to send data into network and make calls, control stations are needed. Also, Smart PTT gives a set of software tools such as web client and file transfer software, which increase radio network usability and functionality. Smart PTT has functionality that allows it to connect to PBX and give subscribers the ability to use PBX interconnection from radio network as well. That's all general features. Let me get you in touch with installation and troubleshooting process. The contents of today's webinar is following. First part describes system requirements and installation process for Smart PTT. Second part is dedicated to common misconfigurations and issues that can take place in early configuration. Also, I will tell you shortly what to do when nothing can help you. Let's start. System requirements for Smart PTT are in the mid-tech level of today's PC technology. Our software works only with Windows OS. Remember that if you are going to use control stations, you must have one soundboard channel per control station plus one channel for dispatcher, if it will be on the same PC. We do not recommend to use more than eight control stations simultaneously for one radio server. Recommended soundboard to use with multiple control stations is M-Audio Delta 1010LT. However, it is discontinued in production but is still available in stock in some shops. Here are some tips on Smart PTT installation. As long as our software is client-server based, we have two separate applications to install. Radio server application is the unit which connects to radio networks and provides dispatchers the ability to work with radios. When installing the standalone radio server application, make sure to install SQL Express if you plan to use event login on radio server. Without SQL Express, features of monitoring and event login will be unavailable. Remote assistance application is TeamViewer based application which can be used to provide quick access for our support team to any PC running Smart PTT software. This helps us to see problem on the place and solve it faster. Dispatcher is client application for our software. Dispatcher connects to existing radio server to control and dispatch radio networks connected to radio server. SQL Express is required for dispatcher software to work. However, when installing radio server and dispatcher to the same PC, there is no need to install SQL twice. Install it once and it will serve both applications. Now let's get to troubleshooting section. One of most common issues ARS is not working, which is automatic registration system. It will lead to GPS not working, subscribers not shown on online subscribers list, bridging feature not functional, and even more. And one of most frequent misconfigurations, IRS ID is not matching slot ID for that system configuration in radio server. For IP site connect, you must set slot ID equal to IRS ID in that IP site connect. Both slots will have same ID. This is normal configuration. Commonly, slots will have same ID in 99% of all configurations. Another possible ID issue is repeater ID conflict. It can lead to some repeaters disappearing from the network or even whole system to be unseen by radio server. All repeaters in the Moto Turbo network must have different IDs. Our software is also shown as repeater in the network and must follow the same rules. That is why we must configure peer ID for radio server 
to be different from all repeater radio IDs that we use in the network. Next common mistake is not enabling repeater to be accessed via direct IP connection in IP site connect mode. If slots are not enabled for IP site connect, Smart PTT will get the voice data from such slots, but it will not be possible for dispatcher to make outgoing calls to this slot. Some of issues are related to licenses. When some feature is not working in our network, make sure that you have enough licenses for it. If license is listed as available for purchase, it means you do not have it and listed functionality will not work. Licenses are required for all topologies and some special features in repeaters, portable radios and mobile radios. Licenses are also needed in smart PTT software. Radio server needs licenses for most advanced features, namely event lock, telephone interconnect, monitoring, radio network bridging, SNMP service, web console, NAI voice, NAI data, NAI GPS positioning, dispatcher connection per each dispatcher and connection to repeaters per each repeater. Dispatcher needs licenses for radio server connection per radio server and radio subscriber registration per subscriber. If some of these licenses are missing, following functionality will not be available. And concluding the list of well-known and widely spread issues is firewall configuration. Firewall can cause lots of problems. From sound not going through from radio network to dispatcher or backwards to dispatcher not being able to connect to radio server. When configuring the system, make sure that all ports listed in configurations are opened in internal Windows firewall and that both radio server and dispatcher application are allowed to work through the firewall. When it seems to be not so easy to find the issue, sometimes we need to ask the software about what is wrong. For this purpose, we have a log tab which lists all events happening to radio server. It will write all error reports here and you can figure out what is wrong by yourself or save this log and send to our support team to have a help about this issue. Most of errors that come here will have some verbal explanation among technical data, which can give you an idea of what is wrong. Port is busy, IP address cannot be resolved, database is not accessible. These words can help you to figure out what is wrong with your configuration. When it gets tough and you have no idea what to do next, it's time to request a helping hand from our technical support team. But if you make it right way, it will be faster and easier for both sides to find and fix the issue. First, write the description of issue as full as possible. What you are trying to do, what is happening in the system, what are symptoms and what are you expecting from the system. Second, send us your configuration files. To do that fast and easy, go to C, Program Files, Smart PTT, Client or Smart PTT Server and find application called debuginfocollector.exe. Run it and save the resulting file to wherever you like. Later send this file with your request to share all your settings. Third, include a CPS files for your radios and repeaters. Commonly we need a CPS file to make sure that we properly diagnose the issue. Please name the CPS file correspondingly. Master repeater, peer repeater, handheld radio, control station are examples of good names for CPS. Also, provide passwords if your CPS files are password protected. Fourth, if you think your issue can be network related, please provide a network map. List all IP addresses used in your network and write which IP correspond to which device. It will be greatly appreciated and will help us a lot to find and fix the issue. After that, you are clear to go to our support portal. Support Portal is our website related to Smart PTT software and aimed at providing latest and fullest information about everything related. You can use search tool to try finding your issue description here and get some tips and hints on resolving it. Also, submit a request button will lead you to web form where you can describe the issue, attach some files and send a request for our support team. Support team is online 9 to 18 o'clock UTC plus 7, Monday to Friday. After request submission, you will get notifications on your email about progress of request. 
All responses from support team will also be forwarded to your email. You can simply reply to these emails and your answers will be received by support team. When you will need to request help or another question, please do not use the same email letter, but submit a new request. It will help us to differentiate questions from each other and will help you to see progress on different requests in different letter chains. We are always happy to help you on or answer any questions you have considering our software. Visit our website smartptt.com to find out more information about SmartPTT software. Follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel, user SmartPTT. If you have any questions, feel free to send email to us on info at smartptt.com or ask it on support portal. Thank you for your attention.